I'd like to invite you to Tuesday mornings with the Father's Embrace. The Father's Embrace is a ministry dedicated and committed to helping and encourage an intimate walk with the Lord. We come together to provide an environment that would help with spiritual transformation by study of the word, by prayer, worship, and praise. So meet us on Tuesday mornings with the Father's Embrace. We'd love to have you share the time with us. So join us every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. for Devotions with the Father's Embrace. Looking forward to being with you on Tuesday morning. Good morning. Welcome back. It is Tuesday mornings, and you're here at Tuesday mornings with the Father's Embrace. We're so glad to have you back with us this weekend. For those of us who are joining, of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. Uh, this morning, we're going to continue on our lesson on going sin no more. We have actually moved into an area where we've been talking about the fear of the Lord, and we'll continue on that today. So let's start with a word of prayer. Again, grab your Bibles, a notebook, pen, whatever you use to access uh, the word, your tablet. Amen. Father, we just give you praise. We thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your faithfulness. Oh, Lord God, we thank you that your plans for us are of good and not of evil. We thank you, Lord God, as you continue to draw us together in your word, Father. You'll continue to bring revelation, wisdom, and insight into our lives. And, Father, we will be vessels of honor that you will use for your use, and we will walk after your spirit in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, last week we ended off, we were talking about the fear of the Lord. We were in Deuteronomy where we talked about the importance of the fear of the Lord and, and uh, walking with the Lord and walking after his spirit and being a people that would go and sin no more and being a people that would walk away from idolatry. We would then be a people who would walk in a reverential fear of the Lord, a place of where we see the Lord as a, a one who's awesome, one who's to be feared, one who has great power and authority in our lives. And we left off at Deuteronomy 28.58. Today we're going to start off at Deuteronomy 31.12. Let's go there together as we continue on the area of the fear of the Lord. Amen. Uh, Deuteronomy 31.12 says, Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, that they may learn and fear the Lord your God, and to observe to do all the words of this of this law, which is so powerful. This is again about the fear of the Lord. One of the ways that we would come to fear the Lord is if we hear His word. If we uh, if we come together, if we uh, as we're doing together, spend time in His word, it causes us to learn of Him, His attributes, His ways. It causes the Spirit of God to reveal to us the the greatness of our God, and we would be a people that would fear Him. So I think it's so powerful. This is in, in, in where the Lord is admonishing uh, Moses is speaking in in. in dealing with the fact that uh, as a people of God, we ought to come together. That's why we come to church. That's why we come and have meetings together in small group settings, that we would hear the Lord, that we would gather together. And notice it said men, women, and children, and even your strangers. No one was, was left out. So basically, it's coming together within the gates, within where we meet, within places of authority, within places where we commune together to say we come to honor God, that we may come together and hear the word of the Lord and learn. We're not only just hearing. Now, we're not merely hearers of the word, but we're also doers. And learning takes place when we actually can begin to appropriate the things we've learned. So that we would hear the word, that we may learn, and then thus fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord comes upon us the more we learn of the Lord. Amen. Let's look at Joshua 24 and 12. Again, we're uh, referring to the fear of the Lord and, and the awesomeness of God to even give us his word as we remain in his word, as we continue his word, as we meditate and walk after his word. It will bring a fear of, of the Lord in our lives, a greater fear. We're growing our fear of the Lord. 24-12. Joshua 24-12. Now, and it says, and I sent a warning. Make sure I have I drove them. Hallelujah. I belong both I apologize. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 2414. Let's pick it up together. Amen. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. 
and in Egypt and serve ye the, and serve ye the Lord. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the God that your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. God is dealing with us about uh, serve him in sincerity, serve him in truth, serve him completely. That word sincerity is entire, to be sound, to do it completely, to do it unimpaired. I was looking at that word saying, well, uh, when you look at the word unimpaired, it means there's nothing else that's clouding our judgments to be able to do that. When you hear a driver driving impaired, you think of them being intoxicated, and they can't clearly do what, the, what they're doing. And you're not to be trusted on the road. And on the road, for us, it's the same thing. To serve the Lord with sincerity means there's no other things clouding our ability to serve Him. There's no other things clouding our abilities to fear Him, to walk after His way. And then thus, we are capable of being found in what we're doing in Him. And it says to, to put away uh, um, these the foreign gods. And when we do that, we're, we're, when we serve Him in sincerity, we're doing it in one accord. We're doing it with truth and, and whole and consumed by Him. We're allowing Him to be the one that consumes us. We're allowing Him to be the one we're completely given unto. So in the midst of saying to serve Him in sincerity and truth, it is also reminding us to put away the foreign gods. Remember, we're talking about go and sin no more, not to go after idolatry, not to go after foreign things that would cause us to look away from God and look onto those things and begin to gaze onto those things, begin to walk in idolatry where then our lives mirror the foreign things we're, we're idolizing. And again, we're, we're in the biblical time, they had Ashereth, Baal, Molech, the different uh, gods they serve. In our present time, we look at things we serve, money, uh, uh, things, power, things, our own desires in this world. Whatever we feel we can appropriate, whatever the flesh, that's why we, uh, we looked at the works of the flesh, whatever the flesh feels it can appropriate, we can serve fear, we can serve doubt, we can serve unbelief, we can serve uh, adultery, fornication, we can serve hatred. Uh, we can serve all those the, the works of the flesh that would cause us to be a people that walk away from the things of God instead of walking towards him. So uh, for, uh, 24, 14 says, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him. Serve him. Be, be a servant of him. That word servant, uh, we've heard Paul say bond servant. It means I've committed. I'm, I'm in bondage to you. I'm held to your ways, your precepts in, in walking after who you are, what you would have me to do. Serve him in sincerity. That, that, that word again is wholeness, completeness, and entirety. And truth has a firmness. It's a faithfulness. It's a stability, a sureness. We're serving him with everything inside of us, and we're putting away the foreign gods. We're, we're literally, that word put away is to reject them. We, we, we actually retract back from it. If it was something we were walking after, we pull away from that. We retract from it. And we no longer connect ourselves to it. We turn, we turn it off. <laughs> it might even be as simple as there's a television program you know that causes you to, to wander and look away from the things of God. It, it changes your heart, your mindset. It changes what you, you choose to gaze on. You might turn that off. Yes, I know I'm making it in a simplest form, but we, we are to look at the word of God in ways that it would speak to us in simplicity so that we, it, look, it is something that we can walk after. Amen. And serve him. We talked about that being a place of, uh, of servitude, a place of being in subject to the things of God. Let's look at 2 Kings. 2 Kings 18, 28. We're talking again about the fear of the Lord. And, and I, this particular verse to me is so powerful because we talked about coming together, gathering together, being, learn, being taught of the word, learning to fear God. 2 Kings 18, 28. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 18, 28, 2 Kings 18, 28 says, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I apologize this morning. My verses are being merged into one another. So I ask for your forgiveness as I continue. 1 Kings. Let's look at 1 Kings 18, 28. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The verse I'm referring to is where the priest taught them how to fear the Lord. So we will find it together. Amen. I believe it's 2 Chronicles 18, 20. Let me look at that. 
I'm not gonna, and that happens often. A lot of times I may have many verses coming in and out of my head, and I take the time to say, okay, which one am I looking for? And so as we study the word together, uh, don't be afraid when those things happen to continue looking, continue referring to where you, you're you looking for. Amen? Amen. So as, uh, I will look, we'll go back to that, but it's a place where it talks about the priest will come and teach us how to fear the Lord. And as we look for that, we, we remind you that one of the things about coming together and having priests and pastors and leaders after God's own heart who have been placed in the assembly, it is to teach us as a people to fear the Lord. It is to teach us as a people how to walk after his ways. It is to teach us to be a people that would honor and revere God. So we come together, we, we recite the word of God, we're, 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 we open up the word of God, we come to learn the different aspects of what the word of God is saying to us as a people and we come to to see the wonder and the awe of who God is what he's done in the Old Testament they would refer back to the works of the Lord what he had done amongst them the the parting of the Red Sea the the, the destroying of the enemies those things would bring a sense of awe and wonder uh, in the word we're told when we sit as parents when we sit with our children teach it to them when we sit teach it to them when we go on our way that we may be a people that would continue continually put the characteristics and the aspects of God before us, not just when we come to church during the, on the weekends, but throughout the week. If we're, uh, we have family members and we, we're parents, to sit with our children, to begin to teach them the aspects of walking after the fear of the Lord and being a people who walk in his will, walk in his way. Amen. And as someone looks up that verse for me, because we got sidetracked. Hallelujah. I believe it's 2 Kings 18, 28, but it is in that area. But we'll go back. It might be 17, 28. Amen. See how tenacious you can be when I'm, we're looking for something. We remain tenacious. 17, 28. That's it. Hallelujah. Thank you for those of you who are praying out there. Say, help us find that verse. We bless God. 17, uh, 2 Kings 17, 28. Then it says, Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. That's what I was looking for. Praise the Lord. It is about, as we come together, we become a people. Uh, uh, the leaders, we as leaders would, would, if God gives you two, three people, there, there, are, there are those God has sent that we would equip. Uh, the New Testament in Ephesians talks about that, that we would be ministers and leaders that would equip the body for the work of the ministry. Well, part of equipping the body is teaching us how to fear the Lord, but also, of course, it's us as leaders walking after the fear of the Lord, uh, having a relationship with God, being a people who are first desires to worship God. Um, I've, many leaders never thought they would be pastors, leaders, and so we were just people who love Jesus. I just want to serve you. And then you, the, the call came in your ears and then the, the, the zeal, the desire to go after the things of God. And, and you began to hear God say, wait a minute, feed my sheep, teach those around you. And we're all as priests of the Lord uh, the, uh, in the New Testament are to go and, and, and make disciples. So we all are chief. When we get saved, the intensity of God is as we're learning of him, uh, being taught of him, changing in his word, we would go teach another. We would go uh, seek another that could be uh, converted onto uh, the walk of Christ. So in those places that when we come together, it is to admonish one another, to teach, to instruct on the fear of the Lord. But I thought it was so powerful. It says that, uh, that the priests, in uh, 2 Kings 17, 28, that the priests themselves came and taught that they should fear the Lord. Now this was when they were carried away in, uh, in bondage and the, the people were living in, the, in an area and the lions, in, 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 in lions were coming after them because they had not walked in the fear of the Lord. And, and the king then, who was not a, 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 a God-serving king, he was a foreign king, but he had taken some of the Israelites and put them in bondage and realized that they were getting uh, accosted. 24 says, and the king of Assyria um, brought men from Babylon and from Kutah, from Eva, from Hamath, from Sepharvarium, forgive my um, uh, um, uh pronunciation and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel and they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof and so it was the, at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord therefore the Lord sent lines among one which slew them which slew some of them isn't that interesting uh, they they came and they tried to possess this land that belonged to God they didn't fear the Lord God began to send things after them to destroy them and, the, and at this point, 26, it says, Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of God, of the God of the land. There 
find them among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of God. Then the king of Assyria commanded them, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom you brought from thence, and let them go dwell there, and let them teach them the manner of the God of the land. So powerful this is in the word of God in the Old Testament about how it was important for them if they lived in a land that belonged to God. When, when things began to come upon the land, when things began to oppress the land, they had to turn back or they had to find the priest that would teach them the manner of the God of this land. And 28, that's where we come into 28, it says, then one of the priests came whom they had carried away from Samaria and came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord because they were living in the land where the Lord had put his name in. Bethel means the house of God, and so they needed to know how to fear the Lord before they got destroyed. How much more for you and I who live in this vessel, this temple, this holy place of God, that we would learn how to walk in the fear of the Lord. And those of us God has put in positions to teach others that we would teach them how to walk in the fear of the Lord. Oh, I hope you hear my heart in the midst of, uh, of some of the distractions and even find the verse that today we're talking about being a people that would walk in the fear of the Lord. And sometimes it's so hard to see. It's hard to, 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 to really grab a hold of that in our walking away from the things of God and our living daily, daily after the things of this world. We actually are people who walk in opposition to the fear of God, to his ways, to his heart, to his thoughts. Because God's desire is that his name would be glorified on the earth. And it is to be glorified in the vessels that, he, that call themselves the Lord. Amen. Let's uh, look at 2 Kings 17, 36. Hallelujah. It says, but the Lord brought, who brought you out of the land of Egypt with great power and in, in a stretched out arm, him shall you fear and him shall you worship and to him shall you, you do sacrifice. This I look at this verse as God saying, I'm the one who saved you, the one who brought you out of a lifestyle that was foreign to the way you were, the one who has turned things around even in your generational lineage, the one who has shown you what my plans are for you, the one who opened up the Red Seas in your life, the one who brought you out with a great strong hand. Some of us were in places of bondage. If we were to think about our lives before Christ, there were places of bondage, despair, where our minds weren't right, our bodies weren't right, our situations, everything about us was just hey. Wire, and the Lord brought us out with a strong hand. And he's saying, I'm the God that you are to fear. Often we can be in the things of God for a period of time, and then we get this, 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 this enchanted uh, hurt because of something didn't happen. Oh, how many places you go, you hear about such church hurt. Yes, it's there, but there's hurt in the world too. There's hurt all over. But, but we take that to mean because I've been hurt in the church, I'm going to turn away from church. Many people don't go to church anymore because they said somebody hurt me. And we're not making light of it. But if our, our heart is to fear the Lord, we're going to find a way to submit to his word. And his word is come together. Uh, do not forsake the assemblings of yourself together. Admonish one another. Continue in it. So walking after the fear of the Lord reminds us God has done great things for us. And we are to be a people that walk in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's like it's, uh, 2 Kings 17, 39. But the Lord your God, ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. What's another reason to fear him? He's going to deliver us out of the hand of our enemies. We talked about before we knew him, he delivered us from great and strong things. But in the midst of knowing him and walking in the fear of him, he promises that he will deliver us out of the hand of our enemies. The enemies of things that come upon us mentally, come upon us physically, things that come upon us from the outside, those who are accusing you, coming against the things of God in your life, those who are, are, are walking in a place that they're attempting to persecute you and assault you and bring accusation against you. The Lord says, I'll deliver you from that. Now, he's asking us not to be a people that walk in vengeance so that he may be the one that recompenses. He tells us to pray for our enemies. Bless them. Uh, pray for those who persecute you. Bless those who use you he, because he himself will deliver us from the, the hand. He'll place you in the, in the midst of your enemies and then raise you right up above. Hallelujah. And show that his grace and his mercy and his anointing is in your life. So uh, the fear of the Lord causes us to be a people to recognize we're protected by him. We are so protected by his presence. Now, we cannot walk in intimacy with the Lord if we do not fear him. We can't walk in fellowship. We can't walk in friendship. We can't walk in the fathering. Come on, y'all. We can't. We can't. And we all have to admit to areas in our own lives where the fear of the Lord has not been prevalent. Because if we fear man, 
it's what the fear of the Lord is not the most prevalent thing. And we all have places, you know, you can look at your own heart and say, oh, God, uh, let me see those things in my own life that have been about fearing something other than you. And we are today talking really that our hearts would just open up and say, Lord, God, show me in ways that I have not walked in fear of you. Show me in ways that I, I, I'm to take your hand and begin to walk that pattern you would have me to walk. Show me how to pray for uh, situations where I don't see your fear in it. Show me how to pray for my family. Show me how to pray for my community. Show me how to pray for my church family. You know, we, there's so many things we can complain about what's happening in the church of the living God. But God is calling you and I to be intercessors in that. To say, Lord, I, we know the plan you have for the church. And we're praying that would come forth because guess what? God brings deliverance when he hears the cries of his people. He brings great deliverance when he hears the cries of his people. Amen. And let's look at uh, uh, Proverbs. Hallelujah. No, let's do Job, Job first. Let's talk about the fear of the Lord. We said it brings deliverance. It, it brings a place of, of understanding that God has done awesome things for us and that in 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 midst of that, in fearing him, will be a people that he'll bring great protection to. So we look at Job, Job 28, 28 tells us about what happens, amen, when, when we walk in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Being told that fear the Lord equals wisdom. So when we pray for wisdom, let us begin to be a people that prays for the fear of the Lord. We must be a people to understand that the fear of the Lord is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. They're all linked together. They all are, are combined together in the things of God that we are to be a people that walk after his ways and his will. Uh, we're going to look at Proverbs 9 and 10. 9, 10. Proverbs 9, 10. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And as I said, when we come together, we're, we're here together to, to look at the word together. So let's take time, flip to the scriptures. If you don't know where it is, go to the front of the Bible, look at the page number, go there. Or take your time, flip through it. Amen? Proverbs 9 and 10. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. It's the beginning of wisdom, y'all. If we fear God, it's just the beginning. It's just the entry point of wisdom being open to us, godly wisdom being open to us in our lives. And God is calling you and I to be a people that, that would walk in the fear of the Lord, that would walk away from patterns of sin, walk in the fear of the Lord, and thus be a people that can walk in wisdom, in insight, in understanding, in revelation, to have the mysteries of God be revealed to us, how we are to walk our patterns in this on this earth. Amen. Let's look at uh, Proverbs 1 and 7. We're looking at all the scriptures. And uh, in your own time, do a study of the fear of the Lord. It is, there's so many scriptures on the word of God, on the fear of the Lord. It's just so powerful. You can just plug it into your tablet or Google, and many scriptures will come up. Or just do it in your concordance. If you don't have all those things, pull up your concordance, and you just go through it. And before you know it, you have scripture verses. You can bring things that will encourage you on why is it uh, uh, why is it important to walk in the fear of the Lord, the benefits of it, and what it brings on to your life. And then uh, Proverbs 1, 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools decide wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge and, and wisdom and understanding, those things, they enable us to be in a situation and know what to do with that situation with the mind of God evident for us. 
Uh, wisdom said, uh, knowledge is to know the information. Wisdom gives us the capacity to use that information in the way God would have us to use it. In the day that information is so freely given to us, we can get on the internet, we can find anything we need. We have books, we have many things, but we need the wisdom of God to even know how to appropriate that information in, in, in a way that it would bring growth in the body. We're going to look at Psalm, um, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. 12, 13. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with us this morning. It says, um, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What is the conclusion of the whole, whole matter? After all is said and done, let's hear that conclusion. Fear God. Keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of a man. Wow. Uh, you know, sometimes we want to know, well, what, give, me, give me the punchline. What does this all mean? It, all of this we talk about, all of this we're dealing with is about the conclusion of the matter is the fear of God. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. What is the conclusion of the matter? Fear God. What is the end of it? What is the, what is the, uh, what, what's it all about? Fear God. Why? We heard fear God is the beginning of wisdom. Fearing God causes us to revere him. Fearing God is a place that causes us to love him with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul. Fearing God causes us to serve him. Fearing God causes us to turn, to turn away from evil, to turn away from sin. Fearing God causes our lives then to begin to be a place where we look on to him and he himself can be in us, uh, uh, presenting himself out of the vessels that he calls his home. Because he says we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So in the fear of the Lord means we desire for his dwelling to be, to be in us. And in that place, he then produces the work of the Lord outside of our lives because he created each of us for, for something greater than what we could imagine. We were all created as workmanship for him. Ephesians 2.10 talks about we were created to be workmen, workmen to crafts uh, that God created with good works that he put in us before the beginning of time that we would walk in. We can't do that without fearing God. And we have a choice in that. We have a choice in that. He, he's not going to make you fear. He's going to command us to. He's going to call us to the Holy Spirit will remind of us of his attributes and who he is. The Holy Spirit will guide us into truth. But if we choose not to receive that, then we can't walk in the things God has given us. And this is, again, it's not about striving. It's, it's about knowing those things of God and, and causing us to be a people to turn our faces to him and say, Lord, without you, I cannot do this. I hope I'm, I didn't say that this morning. Let me say it, repeat it. Without you, I cannot do this. I need to have a relationship with you. I need to walk in intimacy with you. I need to, to walk in places where you can grab a hold of my heart and turn my ways. And Lord, let me turn away from patterns of sin. Let me turn away from wickedness. Let me deal with issues of my own heart. Let me deal with, with situations that you're telling me clearly stop that. No, put that thing away. Cast it away from you and walk in and uh, repent walk in an opposite direction from where I was going. Amen. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Well, okay, if we don't fear God, then we're considered fools who despise wisdom. So we can't say, well, I have wisdom and I don't fear God. We actually are fools. A fool is one that says, I'm going to figure this thing out on my own. You know, I'll take pieces that work for me, but I'm going to remain God in, in every situation, in the situations that I want to. We, we do that. We take the word of God. We take pieces. What works, what works. You know, if we feel one way about it today, we use it for this. If we feel another, we use it to manipulate. We use it to contrive. We use it to try to manipulate God. We list scriptures and we pray them out to God. And then we're, we're not spending time with him. And then we're not hearing places where he's asking us to walk in obedience. And we've made uh, his grace to be something sloppy. And, 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 and we walk in places where we, we, we don't become bold for the things of God and deal with our own lives and our own situations and say, God, I need to be someone who is about your will, about your business. And, and Jesus lives in me to show me that, but he's not going to make me unless I submit myself to him and resist the enemy's attempts to cause me to pull back into ways that are ungodly. Amen. So uh, let's look at uh, Psalms. 2514, and we're almost out of time. We'll look at it some more. And pray for me next week. All our scriptures will be more in order. But praise the Lord. I hope it was a blessing to you. I, we, we, I, we come together just to be a people that can sit in his word and say, oh, Lord, what are you saying to us? How are you moving in our lives? Help us to be people daily. When no one else is looking, where's my heart at with you? When no one else sees, what are some things that you and I can sit and talk with? How, how can you be my father in a way that becomes a place of intimacy for me that I may join to your presence? Amen. And uh, this is so powerful. 
for those of you who desire to know the, the heart of God, the things of God, Psalms 25, 14 says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Oh, goodness. That, to me, that's, that, that breeds such intimacy. The secret of the Lord is, is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Wow, what, what an awesome promise to us. If I fear God, if I'm a person that walk after, walks after him and pursue those things, walk after the spirit, he says his secrets will be with me. He'll tell me things. That, 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 that uh, otherwise I, I, I wouldn't know. He tells me things that others wouldn't know that don't walk with him. I become his friend. And he shares his secrets with me. That is so powerful. So the remedy is the secrets of the Lord is with those that fear him. And yes, we're going to be fought on fearing God because there are going to be so many other things to fear. Fear, fear and fear itself. Fear this isn't going to happen. That's going to happen. Oh, tomorrow. You know, sometimes you can wake up in the middle of the night and a, a stream of fear tries to hit you over your family, over situations. And that's when, you know, the Holy Ghost comes up and says, no, I need you to stand in faith. Believe God for what he has said. I have said some things to you. I've called you to be a people. Know my word so that you may use that word to fight. Uh, walking in the fear of the Lord doesn't cause us to be just people who just kind of sit there. You know, just walking around. No, you're going to have to use that word to combat those things that will come against us walking in the fear of God instead of walking after the fear of the things uh, we're, we're concerned about or worried about, whatever that may be, the, the economy, the state of the nation, wars coming on the land. He told us these things will happen, but don't lose heart because he has overcome the world. The fear of the Lord allows you and I to overcome daily. The Bible says we are already overcomers. But in the manifestation of that, you and I are, are walking out the manifestation of the overcoming power of Jesus in our lives. Amen. So I think we're out of time. Hallelujah. We may have a couple more minutes. Are we out of time? And, and so I'm gonna, we're going to end with Psalm 34-7. 34-7. So the secrets, 25 tells us the secrets of the Lord is with those that fear him. 34 and 7 says to us, Hallelujah, that the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivered them. Oh, deliverance, the angels. You know how we say, well, angel of the Lord encamp about me. Well, if you're not walking in the fear of the Lord, I'm kind of sorry that's not happening. That, 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 that really isn't happening. I have to say that to myself more. If you're not walking in the fear of the Lord of right now, you can't be crying out for the angels to come and protect you. They only do the will of the Lord. And the will of the Lord says, the fear of the Lord. Uh, let's read it together. If you would, please, in your own time, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivers them. I, the deliverance comes in my fear in God. The angels will encamp. They'll, they literally, you, could you imagine these angels? And we're not talking about the little ones that the, the world makes with the, 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 the Cupid-looking angels. We're talking about great, mighty, warring angels of God coming in and camping about you and camping around your family, and camping around your community, and camp just because you're there, camping around your church, and camping around the nation. If we were as a nation, we'd be a people that fear God. Could you see him in camping around America? Oh, Lord, the things that have, have been open to this nation will begin to close. They'll begin to get shut down. They'll begin to run. And either they'll come and submit to God, or they'll run. And so the fear of the Lord encamps, it, which means it, it puts a garrison around us, a protection, a fortress, a, a strong tower around us, and prevents the enemy from coming after us. And he says, I not only, they don't only encamp about us, but they deliver us. When things happen, there's a deliverance that comes forth. That's why we can say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. As we end this morning, please, this week, continue on the fear of the Lord. Pick five or ten verses for the week. Look at them daily. Amen. About the fear of the Lord and, and, and pray, through, pray through them for your life and your family, your situation, your community, your church, or for those God is placing on your heart, for the nation. As the people of God, his heart is if we fear him, we begin to, to desire the things he wants. We begin to cry out for the things that he cries out for, which is for a nation that would turn their hearts completely to the Lord God. Amen. So this morning, I bless you, and I thank you for being with us. We love you. We love when you're here with us in the morning. We'll see you next week. And for those of you that were new with us, please keep coming back, and let's share in the word together. So, Father, we bless you. We give you praise. We ask, oh, God, Holy Ghost, that you would continue to reveal the fear of the Lord in our hearts. Show us areas that we don't walk in fear of you, Lord God. Give us the grace and the mercy to turn. Father, we ask for grace. We know it's grace that enables us to change, grace that enables us to stand in your way, God. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we bless you. Father, we pray for those who are hurting this morning, God. Meet their needs today, God. Heal the wounded heart. Let them know that you are a father that loves. In the fear of the Lord, there's great love, there's great reverence, there's great protection, and we honor you today. We love you, gracious, merciful, mighty God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Hallelujah. See you next week. We love you. Amen.